In the next few minutes, we'll take you on a cook's tour of the services, tools, and products that AWS builds so that you can do the impossible. Now, it takes literally decades to grow a new scientist or engineer. The effort or money involved in this honestly eclipses anything we might spend to build computers for them to use. And that means the most expensive part of any R&D workflow is the person waiting for the result. You can have as many cores as you like, but you can't make more scientists, not quickly anyway. So if we're to make the kinds of discoveries that'll save lives or make the world a better place, we can't wait for the budding little future scientists to finish with their skateboards and graduate from college. We need to focus on massively improving the productivity of the ones we already have. Now we think we can do that by getting the IT out of the way and offering these very clever people all the nerdy tools they could ever want whenever they need them. Now, HPC is complicated stuff, but here in the cloud world, we have an opportunity to make it less so. We're doing that by packing all the fiddly details into things that you don't need to manage other than turning them on or off. Despite the complexity though, everything starts with combinations of compute, storage, and networking. In the cloud, we call compute instances. These are just manifestations of virtual machines from a thing called Amazon EC2. We have hundreds and hundreds of different instance types, more or less one for every occasion. But for HPC, there are some special instances you'll probably want to look at first, and it won't shock you to know that we've called them HPC instances. Now, these are instance types built on Intel, AMD, and even our own ARM-based processors called AWS Graviton. And GPUs, well, you didn't even need to ask. Our GPU instances are deployed in ultra clusters. It's a cool name, and yes, they're really, really big. Now, networking is pretty simple because all the fast stuff is made from something we call the Elastic Fabric Adapter, or EFA and it's the default on almost anything we build now. EFA is a custom-built high-speed network adapter that lets very chatty codes with high levels of internode comms scale out to thousands of GPUs and CPUs without missing a beat. Now, EFA supports instances with bandwidths up to 3.2 terabits per second, although by the time I finish saying this, that figure will probably be out of date. My mother warned me about working in tech. Now, EFA is our functional equivalent of InfiniBand, but it's been built for working in a truly gigantic cloud environment. Your code won't know any different though. So you just run with the same MPIs you know and love, or a nickel if you're a machine learner, and our libfabric providers underneath do the work of pushing packets around in swarms all over our fabric. If you've ever heard someone say, the cloud doesn't have InfiniBand, so they can't run my code, well, they're only half right. We don't have InfiniBand, but we can definitely run your code because we have EFA instead. Like I said, your code won't notice the difference, and that's the whole point. Storage, on the other hand, comes in a lot of different shapes and sizes, from fast local disks to exabytes of object storage. But at the top end, we have a service called Amazon FSx that can call into existence Lustre or OpenZFS file systems whenever you need them. And they can do cool things like dynamically expand when you need more, or automatically synchronize with large data sets in S3 buckets. You can even dial up the performance if you need more. If you've ever built a Lustre file system by hand, and may somebody have mercy on your soul, you'll know that it's hard. Well, Amazon FSx makes it not hard. So not hard that you can spin up file systems when you need them and toss them away when you're done. And that's the least strange thing they do. Now, putting all these things together so that you can run science and engineering workloads, that's the domain of some very special products and services we've built specifically for R&D environments. AWS Parallel Cluster is a supported open source product that lets you build and deploy canonical HPC clusters in your AWS account. It's based on Slurm, which you've almost certainly used before. Parallel Cluster is a Python toolkit you install that pulls together compute storage and networking according to your tastes builds a cluster, and gives you a blinking cursor so you can start running jobs. It spins up compute nodes when there are jobs, and spins them down when there are none. It conjures Lustre file systems into existence, and it comes with math libraries and MPIs ready to use. No matter what kind of weird requirements you have, and I'm betting it's quite weird or you wouldn't be in HPC, Parallel Cluster can probably deal with it. If, on the other hand, your workloads are container-based lifeforms and you don't have a predefined need for a particular scheduler, you'll want to know about AWS Batch. Batch is a managed service with an always-on cloud-native job scheduler that lets you run containerized workloads in the way they're meant to be run. 
It supports multiple AWS container environments, including Kubernetes, and our own Elastic Container Service, as well as serverless options too, using AWS Fargate. And while Batch does support multi-node parallelism for things like MPI, its superpower is amassing millions of cores to run millions of jobs. So you can do crazy things like compound screening for hundreds of thousands of drug molecules, or finding all the pictures of cats on the internet and swapping them with dogs. We won't judge. The largest workloads ever run in the cloud are actually powered by AWS Batch and running every day of the week. This is industrial scale computing. Rather awesomely, Batch is also supported natively by most workflow systems. So if you're running genomics or machine learning workflows using domain-specific languages like Nextflow or Whittle, you can drop them into Batch pretty easily and start attacking much, much larger problems than you can on your laptop right now. Sometimes though, you just want to visualize data or you need a really big Jupyter notebook to front your compute jobs. Sometimes it's necessary to put a user-friendly web browser in between your users and the total perspective vortex that is the cloud. That's a job for research and engineering studio on AWS, which we just call Res. Res is a portal you can deploy for your R&D end users so they can spin up virtual desktops or do job management through a web browser. Res makes this easy because it uses a protocol called DCV to stream encrypted pixels from our cloud servers to your laptop super quickly. Collaboration's easy because those pixels can be streamed to your colleague's laptop at the same time. You can, in fact, argue with each other over who gets to control the mouse, but we'll let you figure that out in the lab in the privacy of your own office. The coolest thing about DCV's pixel streaming is that it's so responsive. It feels like you're in the data center next to the cloud servers, but without the hurricane of air conditioning blowing up your leg. Res has cost management features, so you can make sure that your R&D people stay on budget as well. You can track projects, budgets, and you can allocate resources from one to another, keeping it all clean and simple and secure. Res has a user-friendly interface that hides all the messy business of systems management from your scientists and engineers, so they can focus on solving actual hard problems instead of trying to figure out which IAM role to assign to a particular instance and how to open the right port for SSH and security, and you get the idea. That stuff should be easy, and now it is. Finally, if you're the admin that needs to set all this stuff up for your people, or the PhD student who's been conned into being the admin, we've put a lot of these things into recipes in our HPC recipes library, so you don't have to invent any wheels. The HPC recipe library has a lot of one-click solutions that you can use right away and customize later. Since they're recipes cooked by a machine, stick with me here, you'll get the same tasty result every time. If you want, you can tinker with the details inside the recipe to adjust it to your own tastes or local culinary standards, and in doing so, you'll be taking part in a practice we call infrastructure as code. There are a couple of hundred other services we didn't mention, like Amazon Bracket, the quantum computing service of AWS, or SageMaker for developing and training your models. But before you jump into the big wide world of these 200 or so other services, get some help from your local AWS solution architect to stand up some of the things we just described so you can get a feel for how strangely nice it is to not think about HPC in small fixed size boxes that you have to wait a long time to use. And give us a holler if you think we missed something. See you in the cloud.